Hey everyone, this is Narlo here. As we've talked before, y'all have seen us playing Eldritch Horror here lately on Tabletop Sim. And I've talked about before and even put in my little descriptions, you know, make sure make sure that you actually have a physical copy of the board or that you are using the official uh, DLC downloads, that sort of thing. Let's make sure the people that produce the games get paid. And as you see here, I was just going to show that, yes, indeed, we do have a copy of Eldritch Horror. And we haven't done one of these unboxings in a while. So we are going to go to just take a look at the box and what's inside it, show you the map and all, and just show you what comes inside the actual physical box. And while we're at it, we'll just swing right up here and show y'all this right here. Don't you love Think Geek? I absolutely adore them. They got such fun stuff sometimes. This is their Movie Marquee box, Movie Marquee box, with all the little uh, pieces in it. The little uh, letters and all that you can uh punch out and slide in place and all and make the sign say whatever you like just absolutely love those and you know what there you go that's my new sign that's going to be hanging in my hanging in my entry hall here alrighty so we're going to get down to it we're going to show you what the box and all is and what all you get inside it And this is the front of the box, as you see, Eldritch Horror. It's a game by Corey Kanichka and Nikki Valens. It is inspired by Arkham Horror by Richard Lawness and Kevin Wilson. Um, it is definitely, it, it's definitely often been called a, a more streamlined and quicker version of Arkham Horror. Arkham takes place, it's it, the game mechanics as you play along, as you watch this, game mechanics to Arkham Horror are very similar. You're moving around, collecting clues, um, getting items, and closing gates, and trying to stave off the great old one. But there are several differences, one being that Arkham only happens in Arkham in the towns around it. Uh, the expansions for Arkham are things like Kingsmouth and Dunwich. It's uh, the little towns around Arkham that you're moving around. You're very much staying in in um, the territory of New England in the areas around Arkham or Salem, however you want to say it. Um, of course, in Eldritch Charge, you've seen you're more of a globe trotter. Your your explorers moving all over the globe to put down the various alien incursions and as you can see here with the art on the cover box you see that very clearly um, you've got uh, three adventurers on a steam train you've got it looks like the soldier up top with a tommy gun you've got a uh, lady i don't know who that would be but a female um, firing with her pistol and the older gentleman down inside who might be a, a cleric or a researcher university professor maybe who is got his tome in his hand trying to come up with things that will help as well. Or maybe he's just trying to tr figure out how to drive the train. They look like they are fighting off something like a dark young, perhaps, with that many tentacles. Could be a dark young. And they are in the shadow of the pyramids in the background there, where it looks like some sort of flying creatures. They just don't look like my go. Those look more like uh, maybe Biaki or something like that. Hard to say. Hard to say. Um, one thing about the Eldritch Horrors that you come across, they can change form. So many of them can change form and look like different things. And as you see, a board game of global mystery and horror for one to eight players. I cannot even imagine what it'd be like playing this game with eight people. I could see four people running two investigators apiece, but eight people themselves, that would be a lot of players. All right, let's take a look at the back of it now. This is the rear of the box, as most games do. It shows it laid out, a lot of the good components and that sort of stuff. Uh, good shot of those, artfully done. I'm sure they don't have don't have just art directors for producing the pieces and the boards and all. They have art directors for producing their boxes and the advertising. Um, various various uh, examples of the kind of cards and all. You see the board there with the counters, and they're right up in the top. You see, there's Lily and Charlie. You should be fairly familiar with the two of them. As they are in the game, well, one of them is in the game, and one of them is insane in the game uh, that we're currently playing. Let's take a look at the blurb here. The end of the world draws near. The world stands on the brink of catastrophe. 
The year is 1926, and the elder being of unfathomable power threatens to waken from its long slumber, bringing death and madness in its wake. Strange cults and unspeakable monsters wreak havoc on every continent as the fabric of reality tears itself apart, opening gates to bizarre other worlds. Only a few brave investigators understand what is truly happening. These tenacious souls come from every walk of life to pit their skills and weapons against the threat of the Ancient One. It falls to them to explore the more remote corners of the globe, to fight the nightmarish creatures that look in the shadows, and to find the answers to the ancient mysteries of the eldritch horror. Let's take a look inside the box. What's in the box? Top has been popped off. As you see, the box has eldritch horror all around the, the sides of it there. That's pretty much what the, the first the lead investigator token looks like as well. The, the image there with the adventurers fighting off the tentacles. You have your customary for just about everything, your uh, Fantasy Flight Games catalog right on top. Next up comes the Eldritch Horror rule book. Very nice rule book, pretty much what you'd anticipate. Um, full color within, list of the components, how to lay things out, wonderful um, examples and rules, explanations throughout. Next up, you have a reference guide. This will be almost like an encyclopedia type thing. You want to know about combat? You look up combat. Want to know about component limitations? You look those up. Want to know about random space? You look up what random space means in this game as well. Pretty much answers just about every question. It's kind of a fa uh, FAQ, a fact for the book. Next up, you've got the counter sheets. All of our investigators are right down here. As you see, the base game comes with uh, 12 of them. Then you have your clue tokens, your rumors, your mysteries, your tokens, uh, your heart and, and uh, mon uh, train tickets and everything. You have your, your uh, tokens that show the, the uh, advances for your, for your various stats. Your willpower, your san—I uh, mean, not your san your sanity tokens, your health tokens. Up here are the eldritch tokens, various gates. There are about four sheets of tokens right there, so you can imagine just about everything you've seen in the game is here in this pile. And then next up should be the game board. We will get that out. And this is the game board. Almost as table filling. It is a big, big game. It is almost as table filling as the anniversary ticket to ride was. But you've seen it in the game there. The map of the world with all the various locations about it. And down here in the left corner, just like on tabletop, you've got your reserve where you buy things. Across the top is the Doom track. It goes all the way down to zero and the Omen track that revolves in the corner in all the various places like Tokyo and Shanghai and London. Arkham and San Francisco over here and then your expedition squares like the heart of Africa and the pyramids that we saw on the box right back there in the background with the expedition that they're uh, investigating at the moment. So there you go. The other parts that were in the box once you get the once you get the map off the top of them You've got bags and bags of your cards. Those are the various uh, location cards that you're going to draw. And you have your gate cards and your mythos cards and everything in that stack. More and more cards. Say, this just does not seem to end, do you? Here's your monsters. And then a bag of dice and the little standee items there. So there you are. That is the game itself. There are lots and lots of beautiful components, just what you always expect from, from just about any game these days, especially the fantasy flight, uh, fantasy f flight games and uh, things like World uh, Days of Wonder and that sort of thing. 
you really expect uh, good quality items like what you have here you know and the smell oh my god if y'all could just be here it's just like to those of y'all that play board games will know what i'm talking about when you break the seal on the plastic and open it up break the seal on the shrink wrap and open up a game that smell of cardboard and ink and fresh plastic it's just like a new car smell just like the new scar smell there's nothing that smells like the like opening up a board game for the first time and that smell of just glorious anticipation of the game coming and slapping you in the face so there you are one thing i want to say and i love these games like i said this is set in 1926 um the doom track across the top you have seen us taking the rounds the rounds have different some people might say, well, they're a month. Well, roughly maybe a month. I put this in the, the uh, you know, video information of the very first game that we played, the very first round that we played, that, yeah, that game, that particular round lasts about a month. It's kind of hard to say, though, uh, especially with this, you're doing so much traveling around the map. It's, for instance, when we had Charlie. Let me get Charlie out of the box. We punched out a couple here. Good Lord, this thing's good. I'm recording this on my iPhone. I'm not saying that as a brag. Just the fact that the camera, it's like they have the, the facial recognition and the little yellow box was going right in on Charlie there. I mean, the fact that the, the things are programmed to recognize faces, even flat faces on illustrations. They are programmed to recognize them and focus in on that part. It's just amazing where technology has gone from. So here we got Charlie. Charlie Kane, he started over here in San Francisco, of course. Let's also show you the size of the pieces. Okay. He started here in San Francisco. He got him a uh, boat ticket. And later on in the game, a Windwalker pops up up here. And he's not wanting to take on a Windwalker. That's one of the elite monsters. So he got him, he prepared himself a boat ticket. And he left San Francisco. And he tr came down here to Panama, where Diana, the cultist, was at the time. Then he spent his boat ticket, and he continued on down here to Buenos Aires. And that's where he ended up, because there was a clue down there, of course. Well, just the fact, I looked up, and I was trying to figure out how long a round is. And it's amazing. You know, you, you sit and you think about the 1920s. That's what these games do. When you play a war game, and it gives you the, the experience of what kind of things would happen on a battlefield, the... the uh, the historical feel for it. it, it I love the educational experience along with the fun as well. Um, because you sit there and you go, yeah, I mean, this is what war is like. As far as logistics and having to think large strategy, not being in the not being in the trenches and getting shot at and dying and all that. But the, the overall thinking of it and all. This gives you an idea of what the 1920s were like. You think of the 20s, it was such a modern time. We had we had telephones, we had radios, we had cars, steamships, the telegraph. We had um, airplanes were coming in, you know, biplanes and all. Airplanes were coming into the, the forefront there and would really expand and explode in the 1930s. But you sit and you think, I think of that, I think of the 1920s as being a modern time. You see it with movies of the 1920s, you know, pictures and movies and music and recordings from then and all. And then you realize that's almost a hundred years ago now. This is 19, I mean, this is 2017. I mean, we're looking at 91 years ago, 90 years ago to get where this game was here. It's just incredible. We're looking at almost a century since that particular time of our of our existence happened. It's just it's just amazing the span of time there. I mean, anyone who was alive back then isn't alive back then anymore. Not anyone who remembers it anyway. And the few that are left that, that don't remember it, there are very few of those still around too. But you sit there and you think of it and it's like, this game in particular puts you into that mood. You've got all this modern stuff. You get you get a boat ticket and travel. But this travel from San Francisco down to Buenos Aires took about three weeks. 
I looked up what the speeds of the ships were at that time. Oh, the internet's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Google and all that. Internet's a wonderful thing. The speed of the ships at the time and the routes that they took. I mean, it's three weeks to get to Buenos Aires. And this is kind of, this is kind of misleading because you see all these routes heading here to it. Buenos Aires is on the east coast. You know, it's over here. Um, on the Argentina. It's not over here in Chile. It's over here on Argentina on the, the southern Atlantic side. So anyone coming to it from this side would actually have had to go around the horn. Had to go around the horn here. Uh, the southern tip, This uh, what would this be? The Straits of Magellan maybe? Where all the storms were. You come all the way down here and then up this coast to get to Buenos Aires. Or you could have gotten here to Panama, where Diana was at the time, crossed through the newly completed Panama Canal. I mean, the Panama Canal was only only uh, about 10 years old then. It was, it was the greatest new wonder of the world. So you could have come down, gone through Panama Canal, and then around Brazil this way, and ended up in Buenos Aires. But either way, the trip took about the same amount of time to get to there. It was about a three-week trip. So if you do that and then give him a week or two for settling in and investigating the clues and all, you're talking about four to six weeks for him to travel from San Francisco to Buenos Aires and, and to get investigating, uh, to do his investigations and all. And what is that now? Maybe a, is that maybe in a 10 to 11 hour flight, perhaps, if you were to fly it nonstop these days? Just incredible. Same thing here. Uh, Diana was in Panama. And for her first move, she went across. She got a ticket as well and went to went to Bermuda, spent her ticket, and then went over here to Freetown in uh, Sierra Leone. And that trip took a little over two weeks. I mean, can you imagine that? Two weeks to go from one side of the Atlantic to the other. Um, of course, this is, this is one of the wider parts of the Atlantic, one of the larger parts of the Atlantic here. But yeah, going on a steamer, because uh, Diana being the reform cultist, we're using the, the, the uh, assumption that Charlie Kane, being the rich politician that he was, and with all his favors, that he could have uh, gotten the, the fastest steamships of the time. You know, he could have hired nice steamships to take them. And, and all this, of course, we're giving the investigators the, the benefit of the doubt. We're giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to have good weather. They're not going to have breakdowns, all this other stuff, because they need all the help they can get. Diana, of course, being a reformed cultist, <laughs> she's not going to have the tons of money and the resources that he had. So she has to take slower, has to take slower uh, accommodation, shall we say in order to make her a uh, transatlantic crossing. So it's just amazing. Like it's, I, I've said, these games, they cause, they cause you to think. I, that's one of the things I love about it. Is they, they, if you get into them and the game is good enough, it can put you into another world and let you, let you just get a taste of, of some of the stuff that goes on. So there you are. That is Eldritch Horror. Y'all will be seeing us play some more of that as we're fighting against Azathoth. And uh, hopefully we'll end well for the planet. We will just have to see. Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate it. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.